Hello everyone, my name is Pixorus and welcome back to the Minecraft Survival Guide. I hope you're all having a good day. In today's episode, we're going to go out in search of a woodland mansion, but we're not going to do that unassisted. We have some help with that in the form of the cartographer villager who will actually sell you a map directly to the woodland mansion structure. And it's a good thing too because woodland mansions will generate in dark oak forests around the world but they will not be in every dark oak forest and in my experience they are actually relatively few and far between. At least on the current version of Java Edition. In the past, with the PlayStation 4 Edition, I think, <laughs> we used to find seeds in which there were three woodland mansions really close to your spawn point if you happen to spawn in a dark oak forest, which is one of these ones with the dark oak trees and mushrooms and everything else. But obviously, this forest here is a decent size, but probably not the size to host a woodland mansion. That's not necessarily up to the size of the biome though, it's really just about whether or not the game attempts and is successful in generating a structure in one of these biomes. So even though this dark oak forest is relatively small, you could find a woodland mansion just sticking out into the birch forest or the river or even the ocean nearby. In this case though, I haven't found one in all my exploration of this world so far and there is a possibility that they could be thousands of blocks away, potentially tens of thousands. So it's a good thing that we've waited until we have Elytra to go exploring for these, and we're going to do so with the assistance of a map that will lead us directly to one of these structures, instead of us having to search blindly. So I'm going to fly over to the Savannah Village instead of taking the Nether Portal this time, and it's really because from the top down I get a much better idea of the footprint of my world, the structure of everything, where I can find stuff. And there will also be bits and pieces that I missed as I explore the ocean. For example, I have not spotted this ruined nether portal before. So it's a really nice thing to swoop down here, see if there's any interesting loot. There's a little bit of iron and some gold tools, a silk touch golden hoe. But I'm gonna leave that stuff there for the minute because it doesn't really seem all that crucial to today's activities. Honestly though, after using the nether for fast travel, it's really nice to fly around your world and see exactly how some of the stuff that we've experienced so far is connected. So here is our village. We're gonna swoop in here and we're going to look for the cartographer. This guy with the monocle right here and he has the ocean explorer map that we used to find an ocean monument in a previous episode, but he also has a woodland explorer map and that is what will lead us to the woodland mansions. So we're gonna probably just trade a few sticks with a Fletcher so I can get hold of some emeralds and I will need a compass to trade to him, which is something I had not considered I would need to bring. But considering this village has some iron golems walking around, that shouldn't be too difficult either. So there we go with the right amount of emeralds and a compass, we're able to buy a woodland explorer map and this will have an icon on it, which if I move my shield out of my hands we can see the map more fully, that will show you the location of a woodland mansion. But as you can see right here, our locator dot is in the top right hand corner of the map. And it is tiny, we are very very far away from the actual location of this woodland mansion. It's going to be somewhere to the southwest though, which I think is that sort of direction, yeah. So we can grab a bunch of firework rockets and it's a good thing that we now have a full shulker box of those. We can start flying and hopefully sooner or later we will run into that woodland mansion. This is going to be a lot of flying through unfamiliar terrain and potentially an opportunity to discover some biomes that we haven't found before along the way. So I'll bring you folks back in if there's anything interesting, but otherwise I'll see you when we reach the woodland mansion. Oh, it looks like we've actually gone south far enough now and we're getting onto the point where we can just travel west and we are at least horizontally on the same axis as the woodland mansion so i'm going to turn west and we can keep flying this way oh on the way since i haven't had an opportunity to raid another one of these yet i'm going to drop into this pillager outpost and see if it has the armor trim yes it does okay fantastic that's the one thing we didn't manage to get from our previous experience with a pillager outpost so i'm absolutely stealing that from them that's the sentry armor trim that's really really nice to have and we're already over 10,000 blocks out on the x-axis so I'm fairly certain I won't ever encounter that pillager outpost again unless I take exactly the same route back to this woodland mansion so oh my goodness yeah that's a <laughs> really nice thing to have and I probably won't have to trouble those pillagers for anything else but finally, at this point, over 13,000 blocks out in my world, and wow, it's a good thing that we have Elytra now. I've used up probably about a quarter of the durability on my Elytra, and 
our player marker on this map has only just enlarged to the point where it seems like we're getting close. So that is honestly a pretty good indication of how far we would have to travel to find a woodland mansion. But this dark oak forest right here looks like it may be the one that plays host to the mansion structure, which we should start to see coming into view in a couple of seconds time. Our player marker is not moving. Yep, there it is. That is the mansion and a very nice coastal view as well. <laughs> very cool. Okay. Well, let's take a look at this thing from the outside. As you can see, it is a little bit larger than the icon that appears on the map. The whole roof of that thing is displayed on the map there, and it's a pretty large structure. I haven't had to dip into my other fireworks supplies yet, so that used maybe a stack of fireworks to get here, but I'm fairly conservative with how I use my rockets, so that's pretty understandable, I think. Now let's put the sentry armor trim away in here so that we have some of that in our ender chest. Let's keep an ender chest or two on us, and we will need the shield for this, because these woodland mansions are the home of the Illagers, and Illagers we've already encountered several times before. We're fairly familiar with the pillager patrols that come around, but during the pillager raid that we recently did, we ran into the other types of mobs that you can expect to find here in the woodland mansion as well. We have run into some Vindicators and Evokers. We can actually see one through the window right there. I'll pull out my new spyglass so that you can see there is quite clearly a Vindicator in there. The grey face, the jacket that he's wearing, and the fact that their arms are kind of in front of them like that. Make no mistake, those arms are going to be wielding an iron axe at us in a second. And I think it's fun to explore these structures because they're a different challenge to a pillager raid. Exploring these structures, you really feel like the invader. You're kind of stepping into their turf and you're having to deal with them one-on-one -on -one in close quarters. It also bears the challenge that the inside of the structure is fairly dark. So you're looking at lighting this area up and you'll often find that there are other mobs inside of here, skeletons and creepers and stuff like that, will still spawn in dark spaces. As we explore this mansion, you will hear the sounds of Vindicators and Evokers muttering. You'll often hear them through the floor as well, so it can be a little disorienting, and you've really got to keep your guard up as you explore here, because there's a chance that they might be waiting around one of these corners. There are some torches up here in the structure, though, so areas like this you'll find that there are very few mobs spawning unless it gets down to the darkest possible light level in the corner. And I'll pop a couple of torches in these side rooms, even though there isn't really much to say about any of them. They are loosely decorated. There are a couple of jack-o'-lanterns and stuff around providing some spooky atmosphere. It's a good, a good structure to raid if you're getting in the mood for Halloween later this month. But here is one of the first things we need to watch out for. In this room with the checkerboard floor of carpet, above the entrance, there is typically a chest. And right here, we've managed to get hold of the Vex armor trim, the unique armor trim for this structure. So that's two armor trims in one trip, which is actually pretty useful. There's a little bit of other loot alongside that. There's some gold ingots stashed up here, name tags and leads, a couple of useful things. At this point, we are farming gunpowder, bones and rotten flesh, and we've obviously had our wheat farm for a while, so I'm not too worried about the rest of this, but I might take the name tag with me at least. And I'm quite impressed that even though we are hearing the sound of these Vindicators and Evokers muttering from the floor above us, we have not yet run into anything hostile, not even a creeper or a skeleton stepping out of the darkness to attack us. And that's all going to change fairly soon, I imagine, but there are probably some caves and whatnot underneath here which are giving us a fair shake at having mobs spawn down there instead. So we'll continue to go around here, lighting up some of the side rooms, and through the corridor there, I can see where a couple of Vindicators have clustered at the end of that hallway. I also spotted a couple of Creepers in here, so having a bow for some long-range attacks is going to be a good idea. And this is an interesting room, actually. Let's take a second to explore this room, because despite the fact that there are, like, five Creepers in here, it's got one thing that you won't really see anywhere else. And that's right here in the corner, where this normal oak-looking tree has a dark oak tree trunk. Isn't that odd? You don't find one wide dark oak trees anywhere. And this is a dark oak forest, of course, so there are dark oak trees all around, but it kind of seems like the Illagers have figured out how to grow a one wide dark oak tree. This is not a tree that we can grow from a sapling, this is just something that they've done. I find that kind of curious. It's a fun curiosity, at least. But nope, it looks like the other mobs have now come out to play. There's a zombie wielding a shovel, but it won't be nearly as damaging as those axe-wielding vindicators. 
Oh my goodness, okay, it's happened. Right, this is something I was afraid of, and something that I am, I guess, happy has happened in a way, but is gonna make our mansion raid a little bit more difficult. Uh, a, a lava lake, or something else, yeah, there's a lava source in the wall over there. That has spread a fire to the rest of the structure, and since I have fire spread left on in this world, it looks like some of the mansion is now starting to burn. So we're gonna have to do a quick raid of this place, and oh my gosh, the Vindicator's already running after me as though I've set the fire. This is not my problem, buddy. I've been ignoring this room on the side over here, but this is simply a jail cell of sorts designed to keep some mobs in. There's a cauldron in the corner and a bit of brown carpet. I'm slightly worried about what that's supposed to represent, but a simple lever and some redstone wire connects these two iron doors. Oh my goodness, this entire place is going up in flames. Well, I'm gonna try and put out as many of those as I can, but it seems like some stuff is running down behind me and the Vindicators are literally setting themselves on fire trying to get to me. Well, thankfully, <laughs> I know a little bit better. Now let's pay close attention to how this wall structure burns down, because in the center of that there's actually a block of lapis. And if you haven't found a great deal of lapis already, or if you just want to look for additional treasure, that is something that we should pay attention to, along with these Vindicators who are still coming at me. Unfortunately, the wall structure here is burning down, but you can see for a little while that it resembles resembles a Vindicator or perhaps an Evoker holding what seems like a golden shovel, although this could be intended to be a magical staff of some sort. Okay, the fire is still spreading around me, but it seems to have left the lapis block alone at least, so we can grab that. Oh my gosh, the bookshelves in the rooms above are burning. Yeah, this was not the introduction to a woodland mansion I was hoping for, to be quite honest. I mean, at least let me see some of the structure before you decide to burn it down, Minecraft. Anyway, we have a chest over here that just has one iron axe in it for the moment. That's not really giving us too much to be concerned about. But over here in these jail cells is another thing that I was very interested to find in here. There are allays trapped in these cobblestone cells, and thankfully they are trapped in cobblestone because those are not going to be burning down anytime soon. Let's hop in here and quickly shelter from the fire. Let's see if there's any in here. No, there's actually not, all right. And I've just gone ahead and locked myself in here because of my habit of closing doors behind me. Oh wait, no, there is an allay in here. All right, well, we can spend a little bit of time with this allay before we let it free and we can explain a little bit about how these chaps work. Allays are effectively the good versions of vexes, the mobs that you'll find evokers summoning to fly through walls and attack you. Allays are much more helpful. If you right click an allay with an item, it will grab the item from you. And if you throw an identical item on the ground, the allay will fly over, pick it up, and even return the item to you, which gets you the you've got a friend in me advancement. Isn't that adorable? Furthermore, the allays will follow you around once you've given them an item, and it is impossible to damage them once you've done that. So they're really versatile little helpers. They also have an incredible capacity for healing. They have a natural regeneration effect that means even if they take some damage, they are not likely to die very quickly. And that's probably a good thing considering they are intended to be helpers, and there's a lot of environmental things in Minecraft that can be very damaging to them, like, for example, the fire that's currently burning down this woodland mansion. Anyway, judging by the sounds and what I've seen through the iron bars, we actually have a lot of allays around here. So I'm going to leave the room for a second. I'm going to see how many others there are in here. There's at least one in there. There's probably at least one per cell. Sometimes I believe there can be two. So I'm going to make sure that the area is safe for them to leave before we end up doing too much else with them. And right now, <laughs> the remains of this woodland mansion are going to be a fun thing to explore, because now the structure of the Woodland Mansion has actually been kind of torn apart by this fire. And I won't really be able to give you the best look at exactly where you find some of these guys, but oh gosh, okay, yep, I'm being set on fire. <laughs> I don't think that was even the Vindicator attacking me, that was just a fire being set on a block next to me. Well, luckily, I brought a bucket of water in case I need to put myself out. Let's hop down into here. This is a room that actually generates as a secret room inside a woodland mansion, and we're gonna grab this as well. I just noticed the Totem of Undying on top of that block where an evoker has clearly dropped from above, died, and ended up leaving their Totem of Undying behind. Anyway, this room doesn't have any doors leading to it 
from inside the mansion. It's clearly intended to be a secret room. And once again, we have another Vex armor trim inside of there, so we're going to grab that. We've got a couple of iron ingots and stuff there as well. Nothing too important to us at this stage, but there is also a cat music disc, which you can find in dungeons. Also kind of nice to have if you don't have a copy of that already. But despite the fact that it's burning down, I will attempt to explain what's going on here. The Woodland Mansion is divided up into three floors, and on the ground floor you'll find a variety of these little side rooms, some of which will have chests and bits and pieces in, like these rooms with the cobblestone stair formation in, for example. Around the back here, you'll find a chest which, once again, we're pretty lucky with a Vex armor trim, has a diamond chest plate inside, also a lead, which I'm actually going to grab now that I know there are lays in this structure, a little bit of redstone dust and bits and pieces like that. We're just going to leave the gunpowder and the mob drops in here since we already have plenty of those. You'll occasionally find diamond armor and diamond tools in some of these. Typically, you'll just find a diamond hoe in my experience. I don't believe there are pickaxes or anything like that as part of these structures. But as I was saying, it is worth exploring some of the side rooms on this ground floor before they completely burn down, and you should hopefully not encounter too many Vindicators on the ground floor. You also won't encounter any evokers until you reach the upstairs floors, where in this case it seems like most of the upstairs floors have burned down by the time we have a chance to get there, so it may be that the evokers are not going to be a problem for us. Looks like another Vindicator has come down here potentially to escape the fire, so I'm going to try and snipe this guy from a distance while we're still down here on the ground floor, grab the emerald that he dropped, and it may be that some Vindicators and Evokers have fallen down from the upper floors to these floors, so we ought to be a little careful as we explore here. There we go, we're getting attacked in a pincer trap. Luckily, I've got my elytra so I can stay maneuverable as they come to me from both sides of the staircase there. And there we go. Keeping these guys at range is often a really good idea, since their iron axes can hit really hard, and getting attacked with an axe while you're blocking with a shield actually prevents you from using the shield for a short period of time. It will block one attack, but then your shield will kind of be stunned and on a cooldown until you can use it again. There's a few skeletons in some of these side rooms as well, and yep, here we can start to see where the fire has got to at this point. <laughs> we'll take out the Vindicators, we'll take out the skeletons, and hopefully we don't end up running into any evokers just yet yet, because the evokers really are the chief threat of these structures. They pack a punch with their regular attacks, which involve summoning fangs up from the floor, and they can also summon vexes, which will wield iron swords and can be very difficult to deal with, especially if you're trapped inside a structure like this and looking for the exit. Oh, there's another vindicator who's currently on fire, <laughs> which is kind of terrifying that he's still trying to attack me, and it looks like the mansion burning down has also opened up a little bit of the ceiling here, so I should be worried about any evokers spotting me from up there and falling on in. But eventually, as you explore, you'll reach another set of cobblestone stairs that lead up to the third floor. And it is here that you'll often find a pillager face made out of wool attached to one wall. And behind that, in this case, is a secret room, once again, kind of like the one downstairs that did not have any doors through to it or anything. But that contains a room with a spider spawner on the inside, and it can actually spawn spiders out here in the corridor as you explore. That's worth noting from the outside, if you can see all of the cobwebs and stuff through the windows, you'll probably have a good idea of whether or not there is a spider spawner inside these structures. But there can be a variety of secret rooms there, including one where some obsidian surrounds a diamond block. So despite the fact that this place is currently on fire and my water bucket will do virtually nothing to that, I'm going to explore the upstairs part of this structure in case any evokers are around. You need to be careful walking into this room with the bookshelves since there is a uh, kind of ledge around the outside here where creepers and stuff can spawn and drop in on you. But it looks like any chance we had of actually meeting an evoker head to head is going to be a little difficult considering how much of this place is now burning down. This was a kind of unexpected facet of this Woodland Mansion raid, and I think we might need to find another Woodland Mansion in this video so we can really get an idea of what these structures are like. In the meantime, though, I'm going to take down all of these bookshelves because having this amount of books from a structure is honestly a really good thing. That's part of the hidden treasure of these mansions, is the fact that all of these bookshelves are out here for you to take. Oh, yeah, no, the fire really did a number on this place. <laughs> that was kind of unexpected, and as we wander around the structure here. I'm going to keep an eye out and listen out for 
any other mobs which might be still lurking around, any vindicators or evokers that have fallen down through the structure as a result of the floor burning out from underneath them. There is one vindicator trapped underneath the staircase on this side of the mansion, so I'm just going to take him out real quick <laughs> through this hole in the wall. Over here we have another little library room, the majority of which seems to have burned down, but we can at least grab the books from that. And oh look, it's raining now. Hopefully that will do something about the fire. Oh my goodness, this was not what I expected from one of these. And I've been to these and had them burned down before, but yeah, I was kind of hoping that didn't happen with our first one. <laughs> Let's be real though, all it takes is a single lava source or a fire set in the nearby vicinity and this whole building goes up pretty quickly. Well, at least we can kind of look through the structure now and spot anywhere that we might be able to grab some loot chests from. There is a room on the second floor that sometimes generates almost like a boxing ring where there are a group of fences around the outside and typically when the room is still intact, a ladder will take you up to a balcony where there is at least one loot chest. So let me see if I can grab that by using my fireworks to get up through the structure here and I don't believe it's these two chests. These are actually part of another secret room style area that generates inside these mansions. Might be able to break through a wall to find this one and they are located up in the ceiling. We have another Vex armor trim, another raw diamond chest plate, which is really quite nice actually. We'll grab the iron ingots, we might as well we'll grab the lead as well because we can use those to help us get the allays out of here once the building is done burning down. One more Vex armor trim for the road and a golden apple, which also has the chance to be an enchanted golden apple in some of these structures. So if you haven't found too many of those yet, these chests are worth investigating for that reason alone. Now my inventory is getting kind of full, so it's time to drop some of this stuff off in the ender chest, including our totem of undying that we got kind of for free, I guess. We'll leave these two diamond chest plates in there and we'll leave the golden apple in there as well, plus the rest of this precious stuff. And I think it's good that we're saving the books because we can turn those back into bookshelves or simply use them for enchanting once we're back at home. Now, if we hop down to the next floor, this chest here is the one I was talking about that exists in the room with the boxing ring. That's got a diamond hoe in it. See, that's the diamond hoe that I was talking about earlier. We'll leave the bones behind. Might grab the coal just to have a little extra. And the diamond hoe is worth bringing with us. Always good to have a backup. Yeah, if you look at it from this side, you could almost imagine that nothing was wrong. If you look at it from the other side, total and utter chaos. <laughs> and the fire has swept through the building and destroyed huge amounts of it. Looks like we might have missed one chest over here as well. I don't see this being connected to a room that we have discovered already. Yep, that's another name tag, a little bit more redstone dust. That's kind of nice. But standing here amid the fire, kind of like the uh, this is fine meme, I guess, <laughs> we kind of need to make our way out of here. Before we do though, in my experience, the best way of getting these allays to follow you, there we go, we've got three of them in this room, simply give them an item and then they should start flying around kind of keeping close to you but once you get further away they will typically pathfind to you in an attempt to catch up so if i make my way over to the exit of this woodland mansion you'll find that yep we now have five of them six of them all six of them have managed to follow me and if I end up grabbing another plank from here, since I've given them all some dark oak planks, I should be able to throw these on the ground outside the structure here. And chances are they will all rush over to it to make sure that they can all pick it up for me. And there we go. We have all six of these allays just kind of hanging out, chilling in front of the Woodland Mansion. Pretty successful rescue attempt. From this point onwards, however, we end up with a bit of a problem, because if we want to get these allays back to our base and really show you folks what they are capable of, the best way of doing that is going to be flying. We are going to need to fly another 13,000 blocks so we can make it back to our base. And while these things do have pretty good pathfinding, flying is going to outpace them quite quickly. If I fly away here, for example, they should be able to follow me for a short distance, but after a while, we might find that we have ended up leaving some of them behind. For example, if I get over here, I need to make sure I can lay down a bed so I can sleep for the night. There we go, we've got five of them following me, but the sixth one has been left behind somewhere. There he is over here. <laughs> Unfortunately, the slowpoke that's having a hard time keeping up. But yeah, even with all six of them here, it's going to be a very long journey back to our base if we want to bring the allays with us. And so there are a couple of options at this stage. I think the best option we have is going to be using these leads to tie them to a fence post temporarily until we can figure out something that's going to get them back a little faster. Perhaps a nether portal with a covered tunnel so that they don't get lost in the nether. Or perhaps we simply pick a day on which we've got a little bit of time on our hands. Then we come back here and we undertake the slow and painful task of getting all six of these allays home to our base. 
Alternatively, since it is possible to duplicate a Lays if you just have one, they're not like other animals in that they don't necessarily breed, they can be duplicated from a single Lay. we can just get one Lay home with us. So that's a potential option. As long as you make it home with one, you have an unlimited supply of these little guys. But I think for now, I kind of want to keep all of these guys around because I kind of like having saved them from a Woodland Mansion. It kind of adds to the story of having them in my world in the first place. So I'm going to return to the Woodland Mansion and see if there are any more leads in loot chests here that I haven't already salvaged. And we can hopefully tie up a few more of those allays. There we go. We got at least one more lead in there. We can hopefully string them up to that fence post and that will allow us to return to this exact spot when we want to rescue them. Well, I was able to get one more lead from that and some of the allays have obviously drifted out here as though they were trying to follow me, but like I said, they kind of got left behind once I started using firework rockets to boost myself a little bit faster. If I had known there were going to be allays in these woodland mansions, which there aren't always since the rooms in there can generate in a kind of random formation, I would have brought some more leads with me, but unfortunately we only have three from that woodland mansion and I don't know if there's going to be an area around here that I can grab some slime. If there is, then I'll be able to tie up the rest of these allays, but if not, we'll just head back to the base, we'll leave these allays behind in unloaded chunks so that nothing will happen to them and they should still be here when I next return. I'll do a quick scout around here in case there is a swamp biome nearby this ocean. You'll often find them adjacent to oceans, so it's a good idea to check. Alternatively, we could do a little bit of cave diving if there's a chance that we might find a slime chunk underground, or we could wait for the wandering trader to show up twice, but one way or the other, I think we need to get these leads. And a short time later, thankfully I was able to find not a swamp, but a mangrove swamp, and fortunately slimes do spawn in those biomes, so I was able to track down a couple of slimes, grab some slime balls, hit up a pillager outpost while I was there to get myself a new goat horn, and we were able to get enough resources to craft some more leads. So at this point, I can leash up the rest of the allays to this fence post, and I will be back probably on a live stream to reclaim these little fellas, and we can do an episode all about how useful they can be. In the meantime, though, I would really like to go out and find another woodland mansion, and it's going to be a tricky proposition considering that the cartographer in the village that we traded with is always going to sell us a map to the same structure. He's just going to sell us the same Woodland Explorer map that will lead us out to this destroyed Woodland Mansion. And so, in the interests of tracking down a brand new Woodland Mansion, I'm actually going to turn to Chunk Base, the online mapping tool that can show you where different biomes and landmarks are in your world. And I'm going to look for the location of another Woodland Mansion, which I normally wouldn't do, but clearly this Woodland Mansion ended up being a bit of a fire hazard, so I'm hoping that the next one will be slightly more up to code. Okay, so I've done a bit of searching on Chunk Base, and it seems like there is actually a Woodland Mansion almost directly to the north of us here, but about 8,000 blocks to the north of us, so it's on the same x-axis more or less, but really different on the z-axis. So we're going to head up north and see if we can find that. In the meantime, though, I'm going to pack away all of the stuff that I got from the first Woodland Mansion and that Pillager Outpost in this shelker box, so we can kind of compare loot between the two and see what we get. Obviously, we got bits and pieces of, like, redstone dust and gunpowder, and most of that I am leaving here, but the totem of undying, the lapis block, the diamond stuff, and the armor trim are all really exciting. We got ourselves another golden apple as well, and all of those books from the bookshelves that didn't end up burning down. That at least has cleared out my inventory enough that we should be able to hop over to this other woodland mansion. Hopefully that one doesn't burn down, and we can load up another shulker box with our findings from that structure. Of course, before I leave, I want to do two things. I want to take a screenshot of this woodland mansion for the thumbnail, because it's honestly pretty hilarious to see this entire thing completely burnt out. And I'm also going to record the coordinates of the fence post where we have tied up all of our allays, with a clear shot of the allays in the screenshot so we can make sure we know why we're coming back here. And incredibly, it is now raining, so we have a chance of flying over to this new woodland mansion a lot faster and without the aid of fireworks if we use our Riptide Trident. So I'm going to open up the coordinates here because chances are it won't take us that long to get there at all. Okay, that was incredible. <laughs> I don't think 
some of the terrain that I was flying over even had time to load before I was gone again. But our second woodland mansion should be somewhere around here, so I'm going to continue flying with Riptide so we have a better chance of finding it. There it is! Man, we made a beeline for this thing, and oh my gosh, it is right next to an abandoned village. Another cool landmark that we can talk about. This is honestly a really cool location. So abandoned villages are a very small chance to generate. I believe the chance is slightly higher in Bedrock Edition, but these are villages in which the population has already been zombified. The houses have fallen into ruin. You can see these additional cobwebs in each of the structures. They will still generate the same loot that a regular village will, so there'll still be some items in chests. There'll still be, you know, pumpkins and jack-o'-lanterns and stuff around in the case of this tiger village. But the population will already be zombified villages, and that's an opportunity for you to step in if you want to and cure some of these zombified villages and turn it into a bona fide village again. Maybe restore some of the structures and obviously that's kind of open to interpretation, right? You can do what you want with it at that stage but I think the most incredible thing is that this abandoned village has generated next to a woodland mansion structure as though the pillagers have been conducting some kind of cruel experiment and then barricaded themselves inside their home to see what effects the zombie virus would have on the nearby population. That's cool. That almost tells a story in itself, which is kind of a neat thing for Minecraft to do just with some natural generation. Either way though, it does seem like the entrance to this woodland mansion is over here in the trees instead of round there by the village, so we don't actually have to tangle with the zombie villagers themselves. And it seems like this woodland mansion, oh there's a thunderstorm right now, which is another way that this structure could be set on fire, so I'd better get some sleep just in case. And there goes my opportunity to use Riptide, I suppose. But yeah, we can actually get into this woodland mansion and hopefully there is not a lava source here that's going to burn the place down. And we can have a more conventional woodland mansion raid. A lot of the same advice I was giving before still applies though. We still need to make sure we run through here and light stuff up. We are going to pay close attention to any vindicators or evokers that we see and make sure that we attack them from range. We're going to be looking for a few of the rooms which contain loot, like this one here has a chest over here in the corner by the desk. Let me briefly light that up and make sure nothing else is about to drop in on us. That one doesn't have anything in, it turns out. There's our first vindicator down the hallway, and it looks like a couple of pumpkins have generated in here, but... <laughs> I don't see a room attached to those, that's kind of odd. In here, of course, I do hear the little song of allays, so there are a bunch more allays in here that we can potentially come back and rescue. Around here, this is another interesting room, and it seems to have generated in tandem with another room, perhaps even some structure from the village, which explains the pumpkins, I suppose. These rooms are sort of like a little maze that you can go around and the stairs will rise and fall and in this case <laughs> they will actually end up getting broken by the village generation. There it is. Is this a village chest though? I think it is. That's really unfortunate. It looks like there was a an overlap in generation there and the village has actually erased the loot chest that was in this room of the mansion. This one right here is the room with the staircase formation. We'll keep an eye out for any lurking vindicators, but around the back we have another Vex armor trim and a fire aspect book. Around the corner here we have another vindicator who's hanging out in their melon and pumpkin farm, which can be kind of nice to have if you want to go and trade with some of those zombified villagers that you've cured and turned into farmers. That's another Vindicator down, and let's see if there's anything else around here. No, it looks like we've looped back around to the room where the staircase is. And once we've cleared the mobs out of this room, there's a couple of skeletons and a creeper in here, it looks like. Uh, we can actually get a look at the giant Illager statue that I made a note of before it got completely destroyed by fire in the previous mansion. Just above the eyebrows, there you go, is where you'll find that block of lapis. So kind of nice to have that. We can fill that back in and thankfully this structure seems to have remained preserved. But I think I've covered most of the ground floor at this point, so let's move on up to the next floor where a Vindicator is once again waiting for us at the top of the staircase where we can take care of him. And in previous versions it was often a good idea to save Vindicators from these woodland mansions because they have the odd property of being persistent mobs, meaning that they don't need to be name tagged 
in order to prevent them despawning. They generate with the structure and it's not simply a case of running away and coming back again to despawn them and reduce the threat inside of here. The persistent vindicators and evokers will remain with the structure until they are moved out of the structure or killed. So that's something that's worth knowing when you raid one of these structures. And that was actually a property people used to use for a variety of technical applications in late game Minecraft. But we're not going to worry too much about that today because there are are more recent developments which have made it slightly easier for you to do the same stuff we used to do with Vindicators and Evokers. If you want to capture some of these mobs and use them for your own purposes, then you can simply get them from a Pillager raid. Vindicators will show up in even the first wave and Evokers will show up from wave 4 and 5 onwards. But for us, it seems like Evokers and Vindicators are going to show up in this room at the end of the hallway. There's one Vindicator here, I'm pretty sure there was another one just inside the door, and that is our first look at the Evoker up close and personal and as you can see they end up spawning these vexes which are sword wielding flying mobs they effectively look like malicious allays and they are a real pain in the neck to deal with. They can phase through blocks to attack the player, they will fly at you and they deal a great deal of damage when they get up close thanks to the fact that they are wielding an iron sword. So I'm going to back off and make sure that I'm fully healed up thanks to a golden carrot. We're going to dodge past this next vex and we're going to throw a couple of arrows across the room with the bow and that's going to take care of the evoker. Now thankfully one of the weird aspects of village generation seems to have trapped a couple of vindicators down down here in the floor. <laughs> They're actually in a cobweb in the roof of that structure. That is so sweet. I'm going to leave those two there since they are clearly just biding their time. They might be falling through the cobweb, but you know what? I'm probably going to put a couple of spruce logs around them like this, maybe a bit of gray wool behind there, and they will be trapped. I think there's even three of them in there. Look at that. So the three stooges can stay right where they are. <laughs> They're kind of forming a corner stair block right now. That's classic. And there is actually a reason to save Vindicator mobs like this, whether from a raid or from a woodland mansion, because there's an easter egg we can take advantage of later, where if you name tag one of those guys Johnny, as a reference to Jack Nicholson's character and the, the iconic Here's Johnny scene from The Shining, you can actually have those Vindicators attack a bunch of stuff other than the player or villagers. A Vindicator that is name tagged Johnny will attack anything and everything except for other illagers. So you can actually train a Vindicator effectively. You can have them attack other mobs. You can have them butcher cows for you. There's a bunch of applications, but this is getting a little dicey. There's a, an evoker down that corridor as well. So I want to run away from the Vindicators, put a little bit of space between myself and them. I really don't want to take a death here in the mansion. There we go. Oh, oh. there's another guy around the corner here. There we go. We can take care of him. Him, and I believe the evoker was down the corridor. He'll start summoning attacks once he gets hit, but we can take him out with another swift arrow. Thank goodness for that. Oh, those guys are always such a pain to deal with. That's our second totem of undying, which I might actually equip in my offhand just in case we need it because I want to go in and attack this next evoker up close so you can see their other attacks. Aside from the vexes that they will spawn around you, these evokers will spawn these fangs like that that pop out of the ground to attack you. And they can either be in a circle around the evoker or in a long line which attack the player from across the room like that. That's a really cool attack, but oh gosh, there are so many vexes at this point. There's a ton of them coming for me, so I need to take this guy out, grab the other totem of undying, and make a run for it. Now, fortunately for the player, you will find that vexes do not last forever. They start to take damage, and you can kind of see the ones that are phasing through the ground over there, taking a little bit of damage as they fly. There you go, this one's taking damage and it dies in front of us without me having to swing a sword at it. Thanks to the fact that they despawn or die like that about 60 seconds after they have first been summoned. That prevents them from just being a menace forever inside one of these things, especially since the evokers can summon them in perpetuity, but man, they hit hard. and <laughs> It's a, a very reassuring thing to have a couple more totems of undying ready for us. At this point, I'm going to take a moment to clear out my inventory, throw a bunch of mob drops on the ground and start putting some stuff away in a second shelker box. We've got a bunch of books already, kind of similar to what we had in the previous mansion. We've already got ourselves one Vex armor trim and a couple of Totem of Zaman dying, plus the one that I'm going to keep on me. Oh, there's a couple of indicators underneath the staircase over here and at least one more Illager that I'm not certain if it's a Vindicator or an- Oh, it's an Evoker! It's an Evoker! But that should at least mean one more Totem of Undying for me. These guys run so fast, it's kind of wild. 
There we go, we got another totem. Let's grab that and let's try and fend off the skeleton that's in here along with the vexes coming in and out of the ground. And now up here on the top floor. Like I said, there may be a secret room behind this Illager portrait. We can deal with that in a second. Here is that boxing ring room up on the third floor this time instead of the second. The remainder of this floor seems to be fairly empty from what I can tell. Just gonna tuck a couple more torches in these rooms so that when night falls, they aren't just going to spawn stuff immediately. And I think I'm gonna re-equip my shield to go back into this room and there up on the balcony... Oh, no, that's a witch. That's not an evoker. Well, witches are technically speaking Illagers, I suppose, but... We maybe don't need to worry about that the same way we do an evoker. Although I would much rather not be poisoned by a witch, so thankfully that zombie over there is pushing the witch away from me. And oh, there we go, we managed to dodge the splash potion. So that is this place all cleared out, and we can take a look at the loot chest that that witch seems to be guarding. There it is, we've got ourselves an enchanted golden apple this time. What an incredible find. Very happy with that. Of course, another Vex armor trim, which we can be super happy with as well. I'll grab the lead since there were also a bunch of Allays trapped in this mansion as well, so we could always come back and rescue them if we wanted to. And now I believe we have the full run of this place. I don't hear or see any more Vindicators or Evokers, aside from the three that were trapped in the village house downstairs. I think we have done what we came here to do and successfully raided the mansion. Now I want to see if there's anything behind this Illager portrait, which in previous Woodland Mansions that I have raided there often was not, so it's not a guarantee. But if we take a look behind here, we might be able to break out into another room, or it might simply be that this extends out into... Ah, okay, no, this actually just loops back around on itself. So sometimes those will just be against the edge of the upper floor of this woodland mansion, and sometimes they will lead to rooms that you have already discovered. But now is really the time when we want to go through and break out some of these wall panels just to make sure that we have not missed the opportunity to grab any secret rooms. There is this misconception about woodland mansions that there is always a secret room on the top floor, and trust me, in my experience, that is not always the case. However, the mansion that we saw burn down earlier did have one, so it's always important to take a look when you can. So we haven't found a great deal of secret rooms or any other loot in this mansion. Here's another room that we should check though, because this one with the wool bed pattern here and the two closet doors, which don't really have anything inside, has a little balcony of its own. And up here, we should also find another loot chest, which once again has a diamond hoe in there. We've got another Vex armor trim to add to our collection, a couple of gold ingots as well. Kind of nice to have a lot of this. But it seems like, for the most part, we have found all of the rooms of this mansion. It doesn't seem to have too much hidden stuff hiding behind the walls. So we're going to reconvene at the entrance. We're going to go back to the shulker box that we were filling with loot from this mansion, and we can compare the two. Now we've got a bunch of Vex armor trim that we'll throw in there. Of course, we have additional totems of undying. We've got some leads and a diamond hoe. So compare that to the loot that we got from the other mansion, the one that was completely burned out. And I'd say we got a couple more valuable items from that mansion. But from this one, we got an enchanted golden apple, and we got a couple more totems of undying thanks to the fact that we found the evokers before their drops were able to just burn in a fire, which is, I'm pretty sure, what happened in the last one. But I would honestly say that some of the real loot from these structures is not necessarily items, but it's the mobs. Either whether you plan on doing something with the evokers and vindicators, or whether you fancy rescuing these allays and taking them with you back to your base or on another journey. I honestly think those can be just as valid reasons for visiting a woodland mansion as as coming here for any kind of interesting loot. And it seems like we actually have more allays from this woodland mansion than we had from the previous one. I'm going to guide them all out to the exit. It looks like I think we have seven or eight of them here. Yeah, I'm short by a couple of leads here. I believe we have eight allays. So yeah, there's two that aren't leashed up and I put six attached to this already. I just need to go and grab a bit more string and we should be able to leash up the remainder of them. But I guess if we want to, we can grab a little bit more string from over here at the abandoned village just by breaking down some of these cobwebs and we'll have enough string to create two more leads and make sure that the rest of the allays here are secure. There we go, like a bunch of balloons outside of this woodland mansion. Well, folks, I think we are going to leave it there. That's been a pretty successful pair of woodland mansion raids. One obviously went a little bit differently to the other, but I'm glad that we at last got to tackle these structures. And we brought home 
plenty of loot. Well, we will bring it home once I can actually get home, but that's another story for another time. Folks, thank you so much for watching this episode of the Minecraft Survival Guide. My name has been Pixel Riffs. Don't forget to leave a like on this video if you enjoyed it. Subscribe if you want to see more, and I'll see you folks soon. Take care. Bye for now.